Y'all can start. Is there very on that needs mm -hmm. to be? I don't see um, Wilson is. Oh, he's at a wedding. There's oh, someone okay. Coming. Okay. Well, um, or this close to, uh, you know, winning a series against the number five team in the country and got away from us there. At, you know, such a shame. AJ pitched such a great ball game for us. And, you know, we had a two nothing lead. Had a chance to extend it a little bit. Um, we had a, at least one situation where I thought we were going to get another run. I thought maybe a three run lead would be insurmountable, but give credit to South Carolina. They're, they're two hitters there. We, we, you know, we got through the middle of the order in the sixth inning there. And, um, man, I thought, you know, okay, we're in the bottom third of the order going to the seventh inning and AJ's cruising and, you know, they're the first batter got a base hit. And then we got O2 count on, on the next hitter. And, um, AJ missed the spot a little bit. Nikki got a base hit. You give him credit. And then, uh, you know, AJ started to, to struggle with his command there to the third batter when he was trying to bunt and made a big pitch just to get the sacrifice bunt. But I just felt, you know, that, that he was done at that point. So, um, you know, we brought in, we brought in um, Devin, who's been pitching so great for us, you know, a veteran guy and, and um, first batter hits the ball, you know, pretty good to, to deep right center field. And, you know, I feel so bad for Dylan. And we've seen him make that catch, you know, 100 times, 1,000 times in practice. And nobody feels worse than he does. You know, he, I'm sure if you ask him, he, he'd tell you he felt he should have caught the ball. It wasn't a routine catch, but it's a play that, you know, he, he knows he could have made, he can make and probably felt like he should have made it. And, uh, you know, I feel so bad for the kid because, you know, he plays so hard and takes such pride in his defense. You know, if he makes the catch, it's two outs, and, you know, we're facing their nine-hole hitter, who's, I think, hit about 215 at the time. And, you know, you got Fontenot on the mound, and we're out one out away from winning. But, you know, the catch, you know, he didn't make the catch. The game gets tied, and you know, Fontenot hits the next batter, and then they hit the two-run double. And then they bring in their, their really outstanding closer and, and we don't get a sniff against them. So what it looked like it had a chance to be a great win for us to win the series, you know, turns into a just a heartbreaking defeat. You know, the second game, you know, they, uh, you know, they just got to us very early and, and um, you know, we're, you know, obviously we lost our, you know, our top starter and Jaden and now we're trying to, you know, just kind of figure it out and, you know, piece things together and, you know, they got to Blake and, um, you know, we knew we were up against a tough starting pitcher and when we went down for nothing right away. You know, we tried to stay in the game and uh, you know, they, they added a fifth run there. And I went to um, Garrett Edwards, you know, just, you know, trying to keep us in the game. And I thought he pitched very well and they started to get a little bit tired and they got a couple runs off him and, you know, the game just got, ended up getting out of hand. We ended up not scoring anyway. So what what could have been a you know a good day to win a series to ended up turning into kind of a rough day for us and feel bad for the kids. You know, just you know, it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. Do you feel like the uh, I'm sorry, do you feel like the uh, ending to game one kind of carried over emotionally for the team to game two? I mean, that's just speculation, Adam. You know, we tried not to let it, you know. I mean, we, we addressed it after the game. And I mean, it's hard for me to tell you exactly what was in everybody's head. Um, you know, the two-run homer in the top of the first inning by them certainly didn't help things, you know. I mean, Blake got the first two outs very quickly. And, you know, I was hoping we'd get a quick one, two, three inning, get in to hit. And he got the first two outs real fast. And then... Ended up walking the three-hole hitter with two outs and nobody on base. And then the kid hits a two-run home run, and right away we're in the hole. So, 
you know, that, that probably deflated us a little bit. Then, but then we had, I think we had first and third and one out in the bottom of the first inning and we couldn't get the run in and could have got us right back in the game. And we, and, you know, we let that opportunity go get away from us. And then they added another two runs in the second inning. And all of a sudden you're in the four, nothing hole up against a tough pitcher. And I'm sure that took a lot of steam out of our sails. Coach, uh, prior to uh, that seventh inning, with the way the game was, just how were y'all feeling at that point? Were you feeling confident with a two-run lead? I would have felt more confident with a three-run lead. You know, with that one chance there, I'm kind of upset with myself. You know, um, Trey, Trey was up with the runners on first and third, I think, and um, you know, the count went two zero, and Trey has been such a clutch hitter for us, but you know, he hits a lot of balls to left field and a lot of balls in the air that way, but the wind was blowing in from left field. And I thought it would be difficult maybe to get a sacrifice fly. And I'm kind of mad at myself. I didn't put on a hit and run play and really encourage Trey to hit a ground ball and stay out of the double play and get the run in. And, um, you know, he got under it a little bit and, you know, the wind kept it you know, real shallow and we weren't able to score the run. I was just really angry at myself for not being more aggressive and putting on a hit and run play there and try to get a get us that third run. So I would have felt a lot more more confident about going into the last thing with the three run lead instead of a two run lead. I felt like we let an opportunity get by there. But I still felt like that, you know, the wind was kind of blowing in, you know, and it wasn't a real hitter's day. And um you know, AJ was cruising, especially when he got through the sixth inning, right through the heart of their order, like it was nothing. But, you, you know, like I said, you give them credit. Their first baseman let off the, the seventh inning with a solid base hit. And I still felt, you know, AJ, you know, he, you know, he makes them put the ball in play. And usually they, you know, they hit it at somebody and don't make real solid contact. And we've been making the plays for him all day. And then he got the catcher, two, two strike count. And, Usually he gets him to chase a pitch out of the strike zone and he just got a little bit too much of the plate and the kid hit the base hit up the middle. So now, you know, you're not, you're not feeling great because the first two runners get on base and, you know, I wasn't hundred percent sure they were going to sacrifice bunt there because usually it's a cardinal rule that you don't, you don't play for the tie when you're the road team, but they decided to play for the tie. And then AJ was having trouble throwing strikes and he ran the count to three balls, but he ended up throwing a, you know, a clutch pitch and throwing a strike and they bunted him over. But I just felt like he had kind of lost his command there with the 0-2 pitch and then even with the sacrifice bunt. So it kind of took any any indecision I had out of it at that point. And I thought, you know, it was time to go to Fontenot, who had been, you know, so good for us the last few times out. And, you know, the kid got real aggressive on the first pitch and hit that ball pretty good to right center field. And it wasn't an easy play for Dylan his angle was kind of, you know, he, he broke a little bit too much to center field and instead of straight back. And I think the wind kind of fooled him a little bit and the ball flew back towards the right field line. And he got a little bit twisted, I think. And, you know, ball hit him in the glove. And I think anytime the ball hits you in the glove, you feel like you should catch it, but it wasn't an easy play. It wasn't a routine play, but I think, like I said, if you ask him, he thinks he should have caught the ball. And when he didn't make the catch, you know, the two runs scored and, you know, the, the runner got to second base and, that, you know, now we're we're hoping just to keep the game tied and we weren't able to do that. Okay. Next up is Trey Morgan. Y'all get started with questions for Trey. Hey, Trey, uh, when you'll go up early in that, that first uh, couple innings of the first game, uh, how are y'all feeling at that point? And what kind of changed after that where, I mean, y'all obviously didn't score again for the rest of the day. Trey, Trey, I'm sorry. Can you lean a little closer? Can't hear you. All right. 
It's a little better. Can you hear me? Is this good? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I said, of course, going up early in the game feels good. Uh, we kind of stalled going um, into later innings. We couldn't really get anything going. It's not that we changed. It's just we just couldn't get it going. But um, we figured a two-run lead wasn't enough, so we tried to push some runs across. And what was kind of the, the feeling in between game one and, and game two after the way that ended? Uh, we really tried to flush it immediately, like not think about it at all, just go and try to win the series in the last game. You say you try to, to kind of flush it away. I mean, do you think that is that really something you can brush off in, in an hour? I mean, of course, like you got to win the next pitch. You can't stay thinking about a tough game. Or even a tough pitch, you got to go in there and win the next one. Is that all for Trey? Thank y'all. I'm, I'm good. Oh, do you have one more? No, I'm saying I'm good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, y'all can get started with questions for AJ. Uh, AJ, uh, obviously a good game, the first six innings, and then the seventh, it kind of gets away from uh, from not just you, the whole team there. Uh, I guess just what, what kind of happened in, in that inning there to slip away? The seventh thing, I just lost my command a little bit. It just wasn't going after hitters and falling behind in counts, which that's something I wasn't doing all game today. I was, I was getting ahead the in the first six innings and make, making my pitches and make, having to make a weak contact. And then that seventh inning came around. And I was just leaving balls over the middle of the plate and not, not hitting my spots. You think that was more mental or more physical being later in the game? I feel it was more mental because, like like I said earlier, like the whole time, the first inning to the sixth inning, I was just hitting my spots and locating all my pitches. And, like, that last thing – it's not that like my mentality dropped off. It's just I feel like I just lost a little bit of focus. How were you kind of feeling up to that point? Again, a pretty good game. I felt great. Body felt great. Arm felt great. So that's that's always a good thing. So I felt like I could have kept going, but whenever I saw a coach come out there and whenever I lost my command, I figured that that was the end of it. Just from a, a team perspective, how, how tough is a series loss like this to swallow when you're, you're so close to, to clinching it in game two? I feel like it's, it's tough, but at the same time, it's, you just have to keep it, you just have to move forward and not like, dwell on it. And you just have to keep, keep going one game at a time and get ready for Tuesday against ULM and then whenever you go to Ole Miss this weekend or this coming up weekend. Is that all for AJ? Thank y'all.